Welcome to Lesson 1 on Line Symmetry. Now, line symmetry exists when a shape can be divided into two congruent parts, so that the parts coincide when the shape is folded along the line of symmetry. This is also called a line of reflection. Now, a figure can have more than one line of symmetry. You can have vertical, horizontal, and oblique lines of symmetry. Now, in the star-shaped figure below, the dotted line represents the symmetry line. So if you were to fold it over, this point would match with this point. Now, points A and B are equidistant. They're the same distance from the dotted line. So if I measure the distance from A over to the dotted line, and from B to the dotted line, it would be the same. So this is one way to tell if a line is the symmetry line. Measure two corresponding points and see if they're the same distance. So same goes for these two points and these two points. They're both the same distance from the line. Now in example one, we have to determine which dashed lines represent a line of symmetry. So in A, you'll see if you folded it over, this point will match with this point. So this is indeed a line of symmetry. For B, if you folded it down, you'd see the top half would not match with anything down below. So this is not a line of symmetry. For C, if you folded this picture of a bat down below, the top part would not match with anything down below. So this is not a line of symmetry. Now that doesn't mean that there's none at all. In the picture folding it across this way, this one here would be a line of symmetry. Now in example two, we have to draw in any lines of symmetry if possible. So in A, if I drew a line straight down the middle here and folded it over, it would coincide with itself. Now there's no horizontal or oblique lines of symmetry, so this has one line of symmetry. For B, if I drew a vertical line down and folded it over, it would coincide with itself. Also, if I folded it down, it would coincide with itself as well. So this one has two lines of symmetry. Now in C, if we try to fold this in various ways, you'll see that it will not match with itself. So this has no lines of symmetry. Now in D, there's no vertical or horizontal lines of symmetry, but there is a diagonal or oblique line of symmetry here. If I fold it across this line, this point would match with this point, and this point would match with this point. You can also test that by measuring the distance from this point straight down to the line, and this point straight up to the line. You'll see that it's the same distance. And same for this point and this point. So yes, if you fold it over, it would coincide with itself. So we have one line of symmetry here. Now for example three, we have to determine the number of lines of symmetry for each regular polygon. So for this equilateral triangle here, I can draw a line straight down the middle and fold it over. I could also fold it over along this line, and I can also fold it over along this line. So this triangle has three lines of symmetry. Now for the square, I can fold it across, I can also fold it down, but I could also fold it diagonally. Here and here, it would coincide with itself. So the square has four lines of symmetry. Now for the pentagon, 
I drew a line straight down the middle and folded it over. It would coincide with itself. If I also folded it down this line, it would coincide with itself. This is another line of symmetry. And another one. And one more. This has a total of five lines of symmetry. So now we're asked what we notice about the number of lines of symmetry and the number of sides. Well, the triangle had three lines of symmetry and the square had four. For any regular polygon, the number of sides is going to relate to the number of lines of symmetry. So we'll make that note. The number of lines of symmetry is equal to the number of sides.